And now Rao's got a sleek new look. Looks every bit as warm as his old jacket, but now we might blend in a bit better with our enemies. Unfortunately, this is not Hitman, and we won't get any stealth bonuses for being in disguise. And even more unfortunately, our most recent victim did manage to alert some unwanted attention. They happen to be stuck behind a door right now. So I thought maybe I'd distract him by hitting the bell on the opposite side. But instead, yet another horn went off. It was, for lack of a better term, a long shot anyway. So we've got a good old fashioned melee. And for once I'm not going for an impalement, because we've got one challenge remaining. We've gotta strike someone to rouse left without facing them. It's the most difficult one, but I've had quite a bit of practice with it, so I might be able to pull it off. And there it was. Either the hilt bonk, or there's a slightly larger sweeping slash motion. But not the one so sweeping as to knock the enemies down that will activate that challenge. Now that we've got it, we can of course slaughter everybody with no discretion whatsoever. I may have gotten a bit too much practice. Everyone is falling before me as though they presented no challenge to begin with. Another alerted citizen who nonetheless did not see fit to join the fray. Since he's lacking armor, I will ensure that he never gets to fight us. Music continues to imply that we are under threat. Not gonna rest easy just yet. And for good reason. This would be a perfect target for our bow. As long as he stays turned around. Which naturally he's not going to. Could still get him with perfect timing. Which was just slightly out of my grasp. At this point I feared nothing. Do your worst. Another three armored guards. Got me cornered nicely. I can break out of it pretty easily. There are, in fact, four armored guards. Which may or may not be my limit. If you hit an enemy while they're trying to get up, you'll just knock them right back down. And that cleared our path to victory. I was only a bit hasty in declaring that guy's demise, but it was imminent. Distant perch up ahead, but before we check out what's around that corner, let's see this old familiar sight. We cleared out this room some time ago. This is the alternate path that would have led to our ultimate destination, had we ignored the Tugu path. Now I've had to backtrack back to this dead end, because there is one thing of interest all the way back here. It's worth returning here, but not if we alert that patrolman. Not only are two guards going to pour out of the door with the mark of the Kasai on it, 
but the barn doors will also fly open and four additional guards will pour out. Four enemies was tough, six is brutal. It's a fun fight, but our health is pretty low. And I don't want to risk it. And so I shan't. And what we've come all this way for is another short piece of lore. The Rakus, who were also known as the protectors in some parts, were feared and revered throughout the lands. Guardians of the families that bore the mark of Kree. They ensured that the spell hidden within the sign could never be invoked. For centuries, these warriors have stood watch, guarding humanity from darkness. Seems like the kind of individuals we might have met so far, if our destiny is intertwined with that of the Mark of Kree. Perhaps we have, and didn't know it. Something to ponder as we return through our corpse-strewn path. Now the music returns to a combat version as we return down this path. Even though obviously everyone is dead and can no longer fight us. Seems to be a glitch in this area where sounds just don't cue properly. I once stealth killed the archer who was originally patrolling at the top of this ladder, and he continued to make his dying grunt over and over again as he lay dead on the floor. You can also see why enemies failed to approach us in the correct way, because we were taking that path backwards. And all that's behind us now. Wandering archers guard a rather elaborate arena directly below Kuzo. I've lost all my patience waiting for them. Unfortunately, I failed to prioritize them in the order they found me. So I've taken a few arrows, but that's fine. Even more unfortunately, the one that I headshot failed to die. That problem is solved, but at an undue cost to my health. So we're back down to base health as we fight this enemy down here. Rao has proven unparalleled in single combat. This guy doesn't look so big. We are going to have to enter the Battle Dome. And he's a lot bigger than I thought he was. Still, getting a combo on him should take him out. If he doesn't pin us to the ground and hack us to pieces first. Interrupted the end of my combo there. Nothing to do but keep at it. Block the sweeping attack that would have put him on the ground. Blocked his own impalement. And another sweeping attack. Oh, and he hideously decapitated Rao. Is that what we've been doing to people? Feels awful. Kuzo's mourning just makes it all the worse. Ah, thankfully that is not the end of the story. Because that was miserable. You must remember never to underestimate an opponent again. But he's finally down. Gonna have to make this one count. And he survived his execution. Let's hit him again, Rao. That guy just needed a one-liner and he would have been Marv from Sin City. 
That sole opponent has proved more of a challenge than most large groups of a dozen or more have been in the past. And even then, he wasn't the final boss of Itaku. No, before we get into anything like that, we're going to have to explore the inner depths of the fortress. Only a single enemy along this long pathway. Just making sure we're not diving headlong into danger. You have no idea how good it is to see those words. Those animation specific challenges for this area are so difficult to perform on command. I once spent a full 20 minutes in this area repeatedly trying to get the one that requires you to strike to the left without changing direction. To do that, you have to activate at least two enemies. And then just hope and pray that you can position Rao in just the right spot and time it just right so that your attack happens right as the enemy is going for you, right before us hit lands. Because after a volley of strikes, the enemy always backs off then they'll be out of range for that animation. As difficult as those challenges were to perform here, it's so much worse in the arena we just unlocked. For the body count in that arena, you have five minutes to perform a strike to the right without turning, a strike to the left followed by turning, Two ground impales, and 30 kills against mostly armored enemies. All the while, archers are raining arrows down upon you, and you have no time at all to kill those archers. First time I unlocked that arena, looked at those challenges, and just turned the other way. For the let's play I did, finally get through them. Now what we have here in the final descent through the octagon is a much easier challenge, that's for sure. Each little stretch has progressively more moving parts in it. This is certainly one of the less difficult ones, because the archers were facing one another. Trying to convince Rao they were simply a vase by optical illusion, surely. This is the first one where it actually does carry some risk to it. We gotta get the Hornblower when he's in just the right spot. Another second and he'd have been in front of the armored guards. They would have been alerted by his demise. Strangely, the archers don't give a damn. Preview of what's to come. And a bird's eye view of the demise of these oblivious guards.
This one carries much the same solution. All it adds is a required distraction. And here it looks like we'll have to provide another distraction of a different sort. Easy enough. That didn't help anything. Luckily the guards prioritize the original distraction for some reason. Can't perform a dual stealth kill on them, but we can at least take out one. That leaves us in honor combat with the remaining one. For a very short period of time. And at this point, we can see the oracle tree itself. However, we aren't nearly as close as we seem to be. What lies ahead is a significant challenge, requiring a very complicated approach method. We'll need a brief break before then. The next time Rao rests, it will be beneath the shade of the Oracle Tree.